Thank you um, and, and welcome. It's great to be here. It's the first United Goalkeeping Alliance session um, with the topic being our five elements of goalkeepers development. And tonight we're lucky to have Tony Elliott and Ryan Gata Thompson, two great friends of mine, and I'm blessed to be working closely with them. A little history on the two of them. Um, Ryan is the current goalkeeper coach for Austin Bold FC. Um, he is the former Jamaican international who has a Gold Cup victory over the United States, a two-to-one victory in 2015. I'll always remember that, Ryan. I have to always say that. And also a quick note about Ryan. He was the first Jamaican player to ever play in the UEFA Champions League. So a uh, pretty cool accomplishment there. The owner of RTG Academy in Tampa, Florida. He is also a USSF National A Senior License Holder. So congrats on that, Ryan. That's quite an accomplishment. Good to have Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. And we also have Tony Elliott here. Tony Elliott is the Birmingham FC women's first team goalkeeper coach. He has his UEFA B license and his UEFA goalkeeping A license. He's the author of A Modern Approach to Goalkeeping. He's the former international English international futsal goalkeeper coach, as well as the goalkeeper coach to the FA England deaf blind football squad. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have Tony Elliott. Tony, how are you? Good evening, guys. Great to see you. Uh, we're a little ahead of time, five hours in front, Eastern time here, I guess, uh, in the UK. But uh, been a long day, but great to see everybody. Loved, lovely to see such big numbers uh, this evening join us or this afternoon in your time. So yeah. glad and to he, be here. Looking forward to tonight. Tony's very, is very busy preparing for his big match against Arsenal on Sunday. Yeah. Good luck to you there, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Um, well, let's go. Tony, you start us off if you could. We're going to basically, guys, yep. go over a quick minute overview of what you had looked at in the coaches' panel discussion. We're then going to get into a quick um, dialogue regarding the five elements, and then we're going to get into a breakout room where you're going to work with one of our um, United Goalkeeping Alliance coaches, and then we'll come back, speak to the group about your findings in your group discussion, and then we will conclude and wrap up. Whole thing should take us around 45 to 60 minutes. Appreciate your, your, uh, your attention for that. And uh, we'll get started now. Tony, Brilliant. right ahead, sir. Sam, I think we've got one or two in the waiting room. So if you want to let them in, that'll be good. And then if you can pop it over to me, I can share my screen. All yours, mate. Right. Brilliant. Okay. Okay, guys. Well, hopefully, um, everyone can see my, my screen. Okay. Can everybody see that? If you can't, just let Eric or Sam know. Okay, so great to see you. Basically, we're going to talk about the five elements of goalkeeping development. So what does it look like in terms of how we develop you as a goalkeeper? Okay, so what we've created, guys, we've created um, a way of working with you, what we call holistically. So there's not just one way in which we must think about developing you as a goalkeeper. There's lots of different ways. So we're going to look at five different ways in which we can help you. In other words, coaches can help you develop. It's a model that we can use across many different, different platforms. So we're going to look at the technical side. We're going to look at the tactical side, the physical side, the psychological side, and the social side. And if you look at the, the, uh, the image there on the left of your screen, all five interconnect. Yeah, there's probably not one that's more important than the other. In certain situations, one may be a little bit more dominant than the other, but they're all as important as each other in terms of your development. Okay? So, again, when I show you a screen that's got text on it, guys, I'm not going to read it out word for word. But as I'm talking, it might be an idea that you try and pick up some of that text and digest that and take that on board and read through it yourselves, okay? So, what are the characteristics of the goalkeeper in the modern game? So, when we look at the technical side, we look at your technical ability. When we talk about the tactical side of the game, we look at how aware you are. Do you understand the game and your role within it? Do you have the physical capability to be a goalkeeper? So what does it take physically to be a goalkeeper? Depending on what age you are and as you develop, what do you need to build and to develop on and become stronger at to make you a physically capable goalkeeper? Okay. We also look at the psychological balance. A big percentage of 
how we prepare now and what we do as goalkeepers is about how we control the mind and how we work with the mind in terms of your development. So psychological balance is important. <clears throat> and finally, um, we look at the social connection between you, your coaches, your teammates, and so on and so forth. And what we look to do is try and develop you holistically. So to look at all of those five elements, each goalkeeper's individual, one may need more development in a certain aspect than the others, but we try and use all of them to develop you to make you a better goalkeeper. Okay. What are some of the challenges then? Okay. That face the goalkeeper in the modern game. Okay. And again, I'm not going to read through all of these. And if you notice guys, I've color coded the five elements. So technical is red, tactical orange, physical yellow, psychological green, social blue. Okay. What I've tried to do with these challenges, guys, is look at where I think, where I consider, and you may look at them differently, where these challenges would fit on that five elements of development wheel, yeah, in essence, okay? So, for instance, tactically, yeah, which is the orange colour, we might look at your support and starting positions. So, wherever the ball is on the field, what's your position in relation to the ball? Now, that may change and be determined by the opposition. You turn the TV off. Determined by uh, what situation is in the game, whether your team's got the ball or you haven't got the ball. But they all link and correspond with an element of development. Okay? Um, when we look at, on the left-hand side, you can look at the goalkeeper can cover up to six kilometres or four miles in a game. Now, we look at that in a physical sense. So the physical demand on the goalkeeper now is changing. So that's why I put it in yellow and so on and so forth. Okay. So those are just some of the challenges that the goalkeeper faces in the modern game as we move forward and it will evolve and develop further. Okay. So Ryan, I'm going to hand over to you, my friend. I'm going to put <laughs> the you, first Tony. element on. Okay. So well, I know you're going to touch you. on one of those um, aspects in the technical element over to you, my friend. Okay, thank you, man, for joining us. Um, Tony, um, I wanted you to open the floor for everyone instead of giving an answer. Um, um, I'm going to take a volunteer, all right? So let's narrow our lens a little bit more in terms of technical ability and focus on handling or diving. Can anyone tell me some of those, uh, present some of those techniques and why they are important? Well, for me, I think handling and diving is probably the the most important technique because it's not most of the game, but pretty much the the job of a goalkeeper is to save shots and dive and stuff like that. And um, handling comes, it's really important because there's a lot of times where I like didn't have good handling and I just let the ball go. They get an easy rebound. And if you have good handling, then that you can prevent that. Absolutely. What, what's, what's your name again? Amir. Amir. Brilliant. Um, so let me ask you one more question, Amir. What are the two roles of goalkeeper? I know first to talk about angling. Uh, well, keep it, making save and keeping the ball at the back of the net. What's the second one? Um, command your team. Well, let, let's, let, let's, let's move it forward, forward a little bit. You talk. Um, I second. think, well... You're also the first attacker. So as yeah. you mentioned earlier, you know, if you're if you have the ability to hold the ball, then yeah. you can do the second the, the second job, right? So great job. Um well done. Tony, let's move on to um, Yeah, so Ryan, Ryan, can I just so basically guys, fantastic, love that Amia. So what we've done, you guys looking in, the coaches are aware of this, but we're not going to go into detail, but with the five elements, guys, these are the key headings for this aspect, yeah, for this element. But there is the fine detail, Ryan, as you've just been speaking about, that's some of the fine detail that we may put in for each aspect of those elements. But we're yes. not going to go too deep into that now. So, Ryan, what do you want me to move on to next? The, the psychological balance. Right. Okay, my friend. There we go. 
perfect. And I know this is a big topic, you know, especially for the, 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 younger, the younger goalkeepers and their parents. And I want us to narrow our lens a little bit more and go on to the bubble dealing with mistakes. Any volunteer, can, what comes to mind um, and why it's important that we have the ability to, to overcome mistakes? Kyle is ready, I think. <laughs> I think it's just having a good mindset, knowing that mistakes are going to make you play better in the long run, you know? Uh, uh, absolutely. And here, here, here's the good news, Amir. We, we all here as, as coaches and as players, former players, we have gone through our fair share of, of making mistakes. And I feel like once we get, have the mindset that we're a human being, we know we will overcome and we use those mistakes as an opportunity to learn and grow. I think that's a perfect way to the next phase, all right? So, um, something, anybody else have anything you want to add, add to that one? I think the decision maker is really important because you have to know what you have to do and you have to know, hey, um, on PK kicks or other things, you got to think that you got to know which way you got to go or where you're going distrib to distribute the ball. Absolutely. Good, good, great job. You know, and I think that we should also, you know, take in consideration, like, dwelling on mistakes, it doesn't help anything, right? It, 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 it might take away those opportunity of making the next save that's coming up next, the next play. So the sooner we could get rid of mistake out of our mind and focus on the next play, then we can make those big saves, as you just mentioned, saving those PKs and one to follow up with that. Great job. I personally think I personally think that resilience is like very important because if you're having a bad mindset after letting into a goal, it's only going to get worse. You have to get that out of your mind. You have to just forget about it. Uh, uh, absolutely. Awesome. And this is where all of these elements, you know, they intertwine. They all work with each other. All right. Great job. Great feedback. So again, Ryan. Oh, Natalie, go ahead. Go ahead. To add on to that, um, you have to have you have to have good emotional control because if you don't, um, you won't you won't like you won't be able to. You might get very angry and lash out. Maybe not in a maybe not in a good way. I mean, there is no good way. So you have to make sure you just stay calm for yourself and others. And, and why is that important, Natalie? Because um, you might hurt somebody, and you also might um, you might because you might hurt somebody. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Good job. Can I ask Natalie a question as well, Ryan? Yeah. Uh, so, Natalie, if you don't have good emotional control, could it cause you to make mistakes as well? Yes, it could. Excellent. So one mistake could become another mistake and another mistake if you don't control your emotions, yeah? Yeah? Brilliant. So Absolutely. again, Ryan, like we said in the, the technical element uh, side of, of development, we also have some, some key details that we've discussed and we've talked about when we look at the element of psychological balance. So with some of the... Um, information you've just given guys here's some real depth of detail for the psychological balance element of development now i'm going to pop back through just so that you're all aware of each of the five just very quickly we're not going to talk about them in detail so this is the technical ability slide with its detail now we look at the tactical awareness and this is quite complex. This is quite a lot of detail goes into this. This is about your understanding of your role within the team, within the game. Yeah. There's the key detail. And again, your coaches are going to help you in the breakout rooms, begin to think about and talk about some of these aspects. There's your physical element. Yeah. And some of the aspects that you'd need to think about in any given situation. Yeah. There's the key detail. Then Ryan has just gone through the psychological, some of the key aspects with its detail. And finally, the social connection element. Yeah. Okay. So there are the key aspects that we we'd think about when we're developing our goalkeepers. And there is some of the fine detail that you can attach to those key headings. 
Does everybody understand that? Is anybody not sure about what we've just shown you there? But it was, ve it was very quick, I understand and brief, but time is of the essence. So with each element, there is a, a number of aspects that have key details that your coaches should need to develop and help you develop through your, your phases, through your stages of development, okay? So what we're gonna do now, and I'm gonna show you a couple of clips before we go into our breakout rooms, okay? And we're gonna have five different groups. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna look at the clips and then you're gonna discuss in your group, each group will have its own element. So one will be technical, one will be tactical, one will be physical and so on. When you get into your breakout rooms, your coaches will, will help you and, and decide that and know which one you're going into. And what I want you to think about is what had the greatest influences or effects in the outcomes that you're watching, that you see in the clips, okay? So what I want you to think about, these are some ideas that you might start to think about, yeah? When you go into your breakout rooms, when you've watched the clips, here are some of the considerations for you. So in the clips, which aspects from each of your developments, yeah, your elements of development, which aspects were the most influential in these scenarios? So in each element, we had all those different aspects. But which ones do you think were most important in your element of development, okay? What helped or hindered the goalkeeper or his teammates during these game scenarios, yeah? We might not discuss all of them, as I note there. And finally, was there one element, yeah, more important than the others during these game scenarios that you're gonna see, okay? Is everybody clear on that? Now, these are just some ideas of what you need to look at when you watch the clips. What you need to start thinking about, because when you go into your breakout room and you get your element of development, you need to think about that specific element when you've watched these two clips, okay? So we'll come back to this slide, but those are the groups. So if you get group one, you're gonna be in the technical elements. If you group two, tactical and so on, okay? We'll come back to that before we go into the breakout rooms. So I'm now gonna play the clips for you guys. And I've chosen one of the top goalkeepers from the English Premier League, okay? Kasper Schmeichel had a very famous father, Peter Schmeichel, played for Manchester United a few years ago. Kasper's very similar in his style, in the way he plays. Now, I'm going to play the clips. I'll play them a couple of times. Hopefully, they'll come across smoothly at your end. If anybody has a problem viewing them, don't worry too much because your coaches um, should have seen and will have looked at them. Okay? So... Uh, a quick question. Yes. So, on the subject of Kasper Schmeichel, have you yes. seen the Danish catch that he's done? Yes. So, I've been trying that... Catch. Yeah. I've been trying that for the past few days, and I can't decide um, which one's better. Right, okay. I'm more comfortable with the traditional technique, but I feel like the yes. Danish catch, it's more right. secure. Okay. So, now, great question. Love that, Amia. Now, do you mind if we talk about that at the end of the, of the Zoom meeting? Yeah, that's perfect. Just fine. remind me, because obviously we've got to get through this, and I've got an opinion on it, and I'm sure some of the other coaches will. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Awesome, but don't forget, remind me at the end. Yeah, One minute. brilliant young man. Okay, here's your two clips. I'm going to play through them twice. They happen very quick. So again, think of all the five elements. You may be talking about one particular element when you go into your breakout rooms. Here we go. Let me just turn the sound off because we probably don't need the sound on. Okay. Now, did anybody have a problem seeing those clips? Could you replay one more time, please? Yeah, they're going to go through. Now, I'm going to give you a little clue. Okay? Have a look at the top left-hand corners. Have a look at the scores. Have a look at the times. Hugely important. Okay? We're talking about game scenarios, but we're also talking about 
game management, stages of the game, yeah, game context. Words I'm, I'm using quite quite big and, and advanced, but hopefully you'll understand what I'm trying to say when you look at what moments of the game these saves happen. Okay, everybody happy? Did they come across okay? Did they flow nicely? Yep. Okay, nobody had a problem seeing the clips. Two top saves, okay? So, there again, just a reminder of some of the things you need to think about, okay? So, Eric. Yep, I got it from here. There's the groups. All right. Over to you, my friend. So, here's how it's going to be broken out. We are going to now divide the participants into five groups. Each group is going to get a, a, a element of development. Our five coaches today are Ryan Matson, who is the goalkeeper director for Florida Premier FC in Tampa Bay. We have Jesse Goldman, who is the goalkeeper coach for the Northeastern Huskies men's soccer team in Boston, Massachusetts. We have Greg Kenny, who is the New York University, um, I believe it's the men's, it is the men's goalkeeper coach at NYU. Chad Prickett, who's the goalkeeper coach for the Ohio Wellesley University men's and women's uh, university team, as well as the owner of Columbus Goalkeeper Academy, and Mark Nowak, who is the assistant women's and goalkeeper coach at Fort Hayes University. So we are going to then put you into your respective groups. Sam, you can go right ahead and just start assigning. Coaches, eight minutes. Eight minutes. Thank you, Sam. No worries, mate. They're all done. Good. Guys, Ryan, Eric, myself, we'll stay out of it. Sam, you as well, yeah? yeah? Are they all aware they just have to click on the join and then they go across, yeah? Yeah, I'm seeing the participant going way down, which is good. Yeah. Let me know when we're done. Yep, it's just coaches here now. It's Sam, just Sam, us. Tony. Oh, Sam just went. Now it's the four of us. Yeah, good, good. Brilliant. So everybody's gone. Brilliant. Yep. Happy guys? Yeah. Yeah. Ryan, how about you? You're on mute, Ryan. <laughs> yep. Right, yeah. All good, brother. All good. All <laughs> happy? Good. I think it's gone smoothly. So no problem. I tell you, what, hey, what about... The kid's speaking up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That kid's twice great. He, he answered twice of them. Twice. Awesome. Better than the older ones. Well, yeah. we'll talk about confidence. I'm yeah, like, amazing. I'm blown away. What about Amir asking me that question about the bucket catch? Uh -huh. The Danish catch. The, 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 the Danish catch. Yeah. Uh, Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Sam. Yeah. Just yeah, so, so he, he, you know, it's like, but look, again, look, like, it's Tony. like his dad, you know. Tony, can I jump in real quick? Uh, yeah. Sam, we had someone jump on late. Can, uh, yeah, I've got to sign out. him to something Thank else you. now. Appreciate that. Uh, if I can do it. Um. We're all in breakout room, sir. We're just going to get you into a respective room so you can participate with the group. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, great. I mean, you know, what a fantastic question from Amir, you know. So, we can talk about that at the end. You know, when we have any questions, you can throw that in there. I'm more than happy to it, sort of talk it, about it. it. It's funny, very much like his. Casper's very much like his father. You know, he's he's, he's totally different, totally radical. Yeah. You know, he's 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 an extreme. So obviously, he's using you know a technique that suits him. It doesn't suit everybody, and that's what we need to get across. You know, um, yeah, well, I think that's massively. The, the question is though, was it was it more for fun and giggles, or because you know? Or it's just, you know, it's, it's actually his thing, you know? Yeah. I think a lot, of, One a, lot of, a lot of kids saw that. Damn, and everything okay? They do that in games. Yeah, well done. Yeah. You know, well, he will never do it in games. Unless no. he's that, he gets there, you know? <laughs> but Casper did, you know, Casper has, he's used it in games. And that's what, so it's good that, you know, the kids are seeing this, you know? Yeah. Um, but this is the thing now. They want to emulate that. They want to copy that. But I think as coaches, we have a duty to, to give them an understanding of how he's capable of using that technique because he's trained in it, he's practised it. You know, it suits him, it fits him. Um, you know, and that's vitally important. So I think we can talk about that at the end, can't we? Thank you, Sam. 
So oh, that was that was there, and then Eric they had, they had to click join, not me. Oh, oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. So, only, so when we come back in, guys, um, Eric, you can you can drive it from there from, yeah, for the next week. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go right in order and how I read them, and and then yeah. have them facilitate their own group, and then after the when they're done. I'll then come back to the two of you, Tony, Ryan, and yeah. let you guys kind of just wrap up, conclude, kind of ad lib. Like you guys kind of do your thing, man. What for, what points do you want to emphasize based on what we're going to talk about? As Ryan, is is there this? anything from the is there anything from the clips that you want to point out in particular? Yeah, I think it's important that the moments you talk about the moments, um, yeah. the second minute and the last minute, that the focus is, is equally as good from start to finish. Yeah, and I think you know, and then we could talk about when goals normally score the first 15 minutes to the last 15 yeah. minutes, and keepers tend to zone out, you know, are distracted. Well, I think, you know, I I think talk the, about that. what you can also think about, mate, when you talk about it, that's why I wanted that, you know, the context because you know, don't forget, we've had it, they've had a good warm up, then you go in, you, you chill out, you, you settle, and then literally two minutes into the game, he's having to produce that first save. Yeah. So, yep. you know, we talk about, you know, mentally being prepared, physically having the capability to make the save, you know, the context of the game and game management. And we also talk, you know, one of the big um, aspects of the technical element is big saves. That's a big save. Yeah. Yep. Was. Second minute. That's huge, you know. Yep. Um, that was, and he that might not, he, he may not have had anything to do before that. That's his first touch of the ball probably in the second minute, you know. Yeah, Likewise, yeah. the last one, psychologically connected to the game, knows that he's got to make a big save. Physically, both of them, I think, look at the difference in the types of save. The first one, top hand, which has been a big debate recently about near hand, top hand, you know, getting up to those far reaches of the goal. But then the second save, totally unorthodox, like a starfish save. You know, yep. so I think that the physical capability and also having that um, understanding that it doesn't always have to be textbook, you know, it's yep. just effective and yep. efficient goalkeeping. And that's yeah. what I think. It's just the old school. Yeah, the old we school just need to get that cross. Yeah. Yep. Any, any means necessary. Exactly. The ball out the net, you know. So let, let's just see what they come up with. Um, yeah. But I think yep. Sam, Eric, Roy, those would be the key points. That okay. We want to sort of drag out of that if we if they don't if that makes sense you know. Was there any commentary, Eric, on them clips? Uh, I think so, mate. But I I didn't like putting it on because I think no. uh, one of them's foreign. So yeah, I just think, I just I remember watching the game. I don't think that the commentators gave him any credit for that first save. No, no. I think they were just like like th those sort of saves now are like becoming like the routine ones. Huge, mate. What I would I'm also like, do is mad, look what they're at saying. look at the two saves. So. The reaction of the opponents after yeah. the first save, like how on earth is he saved that? Mm -hmm. But for me, more importantly, after the second save, look at the reaction of he his makes... teammates. Mm. You know, so socially, huge. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Casper's mm -hmm. the goalie, Confident. he's the man. Confident. You know, yep. and that that's the other thing. So look at look at how many elements we're touching on now, guys. You know, yeah. but that's what I need the, the keepers and the coaches to understand. So many different ways of looking at one particular situation. Yeah, even 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 the, just the sheer commitment. They talk about the physical partner aspect. He was willing to take the take hit anywhere, yeah. anyhow. We talk about robustness and all of that. You know. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and you have yeah. a keeper who stays in his line, don't he? Really, for that second one. Yeah. 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 So after the confidence at last last minute of the game to come and make a save <laughs> like that and pull it off. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Says something about him as well, especially being one nil, one nil up as well. Yeah, X back with us. How long we? How long we got? Yeah, we're good. Let's get him back in. I was trying. Go to, ahead then. Yeah, go right ahead, Sam. Just start bringing them all back. Yeah. Um, what Sorry about that, guys. On? Just got the boot out of there for some reason. Not sure what happened there. Do you want to watch the clips again? Uh, yeah, why not? Let's start with yeah. that, and then I'll I think, go. Um... I think that's what we do. Yeah. So I'll just go then, through that again. Quick, quick recap of the slides, then the clips, and then we go. Yeah, and let the, let the kids talk as much as they can. Yeah. You yeah. know, let's stay out of their way. Let's let the coaches facilitate their own group, so to yeah. speak. 
and then we'll add our two cents and like we'll have a strong ending with the with us you know what i mean okay so i'll i'll go through these three slides then show the clips and then it's over to you eric perfect and then me and you wrap it up Roy. yep sounds good brother, okay, brother. <laughs> Just let me know when we're ready. Yeah, and Tony, at the end, when after you do your wrap up, I'm just gonna say a few cosmetic items at the end, just to let you know. Cool. Yeah, no okay. problem, mate. We're supposed to be in the breakout. Just let me know when we're all in, Sam. Oh, yeah, it should be. <laughs> I'm back. Thirty-five altogether, I think. Don't have anyone. Yeah, Tony, anymore. we're back, brother. You can go right ahead. We're good. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay, guys, so listen, hopefully you enjoyed that process. Before we get you guys to start the feedback, and Eric's going to lead that, we're just going to quickly recap on the process and what you've just gone through. So we were looking at the five elements of development, okay, and how we um, base our uh, development of you guys holistically. We've gone into the breakout groups. I asked you to, or gave you some ideas of what you might start to think about when you were watching the clips. And there was the three sort of ideas that I tried to sort of lead you with, guide you with. And again, you will have come up with probably a lot more than that when you were in your breakout rooms. Okay. Those were our groups. Eric will um, speak to each individual group and ask each individual group to give us their feedback. It probably won't be um, many points from each group, maybe just one or two points from each group. But I'm going to show you the clips again so that you all get another chance to see the clips and then I'll hand you over to Eric. Okay? So here we go, guys. Okay, Eric, over to you, my friend. All right. Guys, we're going to go in the order that I read your name. So it's going to go Ryan, Jesse, Greg, Chad, Mark. Ryan, I'll start with you. Uh, am I supposed to talk? Because I thought we picked the leader for, of the kids, right? I'm turn I don't know who your leader is. Like, you're absolutely right. So you turn it over to whoever you oh, like. All right, leader. I think it was Micah, right, buddy? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, all right. So... So for the first clip, um, we talked about first how early in the game it was and how important it was to keep the scoreboard at zeros and not give up a girl, goal early. We're also talking about a little bit of the positioning and um, how he was like in the correct position, basically when based on where the shooter was coming from, where he positioned to. And also thinking about um, instead of just, you know, being pumped up for the save in that situation, you, you have to think about the next play or the corner kick. Um, and then for the second save, we're talking about, um, how it was the 90th minute and, he, um, they were up one nothing, so they had to make the, I'm pretty sure it was one nothing. I didn't really, I don't really remember the score, but I'm pretty sure yep. they were up and, um, they had to, so they had to, uh, keep that game, um, for them. So when it went up in the air, uh, Schmeichel did exactly what he was supposed to. He came out getting ready for that save and. As soon as he uh, uh, as soon as he made the save, he got right on it, and he didn't really get up. He kind of sat there for a little bit, um, which is good game awareness, showing that he was aware of the time of the game and that they were up and they need to, you know, waste a little bit of time. Great Micah. job, Micah. Very confident. Awesome. Great awesome. leader, buddy. Can, can I ask a question, Eric? Really Eric, did, did, Ryan, did Ryan's group have uh, – which element were they working on? Technical. 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 Tactical. 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 Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. I, I so apologies. when the coaches come in, can you let us know what your element is? Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Awesome. Yeah. All right, we're going to continue. Right, we're going to continue on. on. We're going to go with Jesse, who is now the physical who is now the component. Physical component. Braden, Braden, can you hit favor, sir? Could you hit mute? Thank you. Nice. Jesse, we're going to turn uh, it over to your group, which was physical development. Correct. I totally forgot about picking a leader. So um, I will leave it up to Kayla or Braden. If do you want to, you want to take charge? I could let Kayla do it. Take over. Take over. 
For the first part, we talked about what hand we used and what strengths we used to um, save the ball and uh, what we need um, to do the save. Like, um, we need leg strength and we should practice running um, to help us get that um, kind of push off our leg to get to the ball. And then for the second half, we talked about um, reactions and how you need to be able to react to the ball properly. Um, so he said that we should like maybe throw a tennis ball or a smaller ball against the wall to kind of practice our reactions. Well done, Kayla. Well done. Is there anyone else in Jesse's group that would like to add to that? Jesse, she'd do a good job with that. Oh, she nailed it. All right. Good. Good. We're going to continue then. We're going to go to Mr. Greg Kenny's group who had the psychological element of development. Greg, could you speak to your, uh, who your leader is, please? Yes, I have decided that uh, Marley will be able to articulate uh, our, the information that we discerned very well. <laughs> you okay with that, Marley? Marley. Marley might be on mute. <coughs> see where Marley is. Not on mute. Can you hear me now? There you go. That's much better. Yes. Okay. Um, well, we kind of went over the mindset and in the different points of games, what like we need to be thinking. So like in the beginning of the game, like the first one, uh, if he let the goal in, then he wouldn't be like in the right mindset for the rest of the game. But if they left the, but in the last one, if he left the, he, if he let that one in, he like, they would have to go, would have had to go into overtime or a shootout and then he might not be in the right mindset for that. Nice, I like that, I like that. Greg, is there anyone else, there anything else you'd like to add to that? Well, it was interesting, we kind of did a little bit of a survey at the end, and it was interesting, and I think this is common of many goalkeepers, is they all brought up, oh, if I gave up, a, if I made a mistake, if I gave up a bad rebound, if I, and it was mostly negative, and, what I tried to say is that it's important that you also reward yourself when you make a good save because it's a, you know, because it's a difficult job. And, you know, we had taught, we talked about the Schmeichel first one and say, if he made that effort and just got his finger on and it scored, it would still have been a fantastic effort. It would have been, but he still has got 80, he still had, he still has 89 minutes left to play. So the fact that he saved it was wonderful. But even if he had not saved it, he still has 89 minutes to be mentally tough and, and, and put it behind him. So, uh, so they, they, they were great, though. Our, our, our group was, uh, was awesome. And, uh, and Marley actually had a, uh, a sister chipping in to help, which was sneaking in the background. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Marley, great job. Good answer. All right, let's turn it over to Mr. Chad Prickett and your group, which uh, was focusing on the social element of development. Perfect. So like you said, ours is social and we kind of, we broke both saves down um, with the one being two minutes and eight seconds in, in a zero, zero game. Um, then if I can get just one of the guys in my group or one of the guys or gals to talk on that, then I'll have one talk on the other one. Sure. I can talk on the first one. Um, so on the first one, we kind of talked about, you know, after you make that initial save, we're talking about the connections, we're talking about how, you know, how would you feel, um, how would you feel after you make that save? What is like, what are you thinking? So for example, um, you know, I, I would say, you know, I would probably be like, you know, hey team, you know, why can't, you know, maybe like try, let's, let's get on that save better next time, you know? The whole thing is you really are directing your team and it is making, making a, a huge part of making a big save is directing your team the right way. And, you know, we talked about, you know, the, the reaction after the initial save. How would you feel? That Who's was that speaking there? Uh, I'm Maddie. Maddie, it's Tony here. So, can I ask you a question? You know, after that first save, mm -hmm. how do you think it made Casper's teammates feel? How do, you think think... It made, how do you think it made his coach feel as well? 
obviously they probably felt very happy, you know, a huge relief. Um, cause you totally think that would go in. That's a, that's sound like exactly. nine times out of 10 usually. Do you that think they trust, they, do you think they trust Casper? Yeah. Yeah. But you know, you can't, <laughs> sometimes when you trust a goalie, they let it go. So. Of course, <laughs> but they have ultimate faith in him. So they trust him and it made them feel good. So socially it connects him to the team. Yeah. It makes him an important part of the group. Yeah. Well done. Crack on. Go ahead. Then, Amir, if you want to talk about the second save when up 1-0 in the 90th minute, um, you know, commu communication, communication, being a leader, being an informer, what do, you, what do you think you would have done after that save or to help prevent it? Um, so, what I would have done after the save, I wouldn't say lash out, but just talk to my defenders, scream at them in a respectful way. Not like, you know, to hurt their feelings or anything. Because I realized during that play, it was a cross back post. I always have a man at the back post. And they usually never let anyone get back there. But if that happened, I'd probably get mad at my player. Not mad. Like I said, you know, tell them in a respectful way. You can't let that happen. But we also said that it's really hard to make a save like that with all the pressure. 1-0, 90th minute, and then... To pull it off is just amazing, you know. So how I guess how would you have calmed him down? So 90th minute, everyone's like kind of tense. You just make a big save. How do we just like relieve the pressure? What do we say to him? Say, hey guys, let's calm down. Let's finish this game out. Well, so one thing I do, smother on the ground. That's like four or five seconds. Yeah. And then get up. I have three bounces, I believe, and six seconds. Maybe go six, seven seconds if I'm, you know, if I really want to waste time. Can, can I, can I just jump in and give you a little bit of advice there, Amir? Yeah. Yeah. And I want you to think about this and everybody as well. As a goalkeeper, when we communicate, we can sometimes create one of two things. We can either create calmness, or we can create chaos. So in that moment, what do you think the team needed after the save? Oh, they needed to be calm, very calm. Calmness, excellent. So in that situation, probably nice and relaxed, made the big save, settle the group down, see the game through, three points in the bag. Yeah? Does yeah, that make yeah. sense? There you go, my um, Okay, but, uh, go ahead. I was going to add a little bit more to that, Tony. I, I think it's like, a, you know, at least for all of us here, like it's, it's like a perfect time to, to build trust. Because obviously before the play lead up to that, somebody had to make a mistake. And the mere fact, as a goalkeeper, you are there to clean up that mistake. It, it's your, your teammates, if you can look at your teammates and like, hey, I got you. You know, because there's going to come a time when you're the one that's making a mistake and you're looking behind to see your defender, you know, doing everything humanly possible to clear that ball off the, the line or make up for your mistake. So every chance you, you clean up their mistake, you know, you just let them know, hey, I got you. And I promise you, they will make your job a lot easier. So I just wanted to add that two cents there. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. No, I appreciate that, Ryan. Chad, anything else you want to add, or is there anything else that needs to be said for your group? No, I think Tony hit on it. Like huh. the, the time, the time in that, those saves, it just needs different, you know, like a save two minutes in, we need to say, hey guys, uh, I need you to wake up a little bit and we need to step this up. All right. Tune in with me. I'm I'm here to go to war. Let's get on the same page. Whereas the second one, uh, Ryan nailed it. Hey, I got your back. Now, let's see it out. Calm it down just a little bit. Let's be safe and smart here. So, perfect. Awesome. Eric, have we got time for me just to go back to the clips, just to show them one thing that, that really can reinforces wait, Can we get physical out of the way, then come back and use it part yeah, of your team? Let's do that, because then uh, I'll show them. Yeah. Let's push it over to Mark. Mark, you'll be uh, who is your leader? And again, you're discussing uh, the technical abilities. Absolutely. So we went over the technical ability with uh, these two saves and our all-star Natalie uh, happily volunteered to lead this for us. So first we talked about how um, in the first clip, the goalkeeper was in, in between the ball and the goal. Now I don't watch a lot of soccer, so um, I don't know a lot of um, goalkeepers, but we talked about how like they, 
he was in, in between the ball and the goal, and how he was in a good ready position, how he was on his toes and just ready to lunge at that ball. We also talked about how his dive, how he like dived for it, that like, and that both of the videos, both of the clips, they the goalkeepers were making very good saves and very big saves. And in the second clip, the goalkeeper didn't look like he was very surprised at the ball being there. And he just attacked it. He knew exactly what was going on. He knew exactly what he had to do. And he just did it. Awesome job, Natalie. Eli, is there anything you'd like to add there? Yeah, and I also noticed when the ball was getting, like, played into the top of the box, like, I, I noticed how, like, he moved his feet to, like, get in position for, like, the shot. Brilliant. Yeah, two of the bigger things for both of uh, both the clips we talked about, active footwork, right? Mm -hmm. And we also spoke about coming up with the big time saves. Brilliant. Nice. Mark, yeah, thank you. Awesome. Appreciate that. Tony, I'll turn it back to you to, to present the yeah. clips again with the conclusion so, with Ryan. I'm going to try and jump on to the last clip, okay? And I just want to reinforce what we, what we talked about there. And this is more about social connection, the importance of the goalkeeper. And what it means in those moments when you make the big saves. And I just what I want you to do, I'm going to show you the save. You know, we've touched on the physical side, the the, the save, you know, his dynamism, you know, he, he showed his, his fantastic flexibility and also um his his understanding of that it doesn't always have to be textbook, it just has to be effective and efficient in the moment, in the way he makes the save. He just used his body to block the ball. But I want you to look at the way his teammates react at the very end. So watch the clip all the way through, the second save. Watch what it means to his, his friends, yeah, his teammates at the end. Sorry, I'll jump. There we go. There's the save. Watch now. And for me, that's 84. Yeah. Big save, big moments. Probably won the team the game. And that's what I'm talking about, trust about social connection, having the capability to make the save and understand, you know, the, 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 the situation in the game. But that's what the goalkeeper means to their teammates, OK? And that's what we're trying to get, get you to think about when we talk about uh, what we're doing tonight. It's not just one element that is important. We can look at all elements across these two saves and they all play a bit of a part in terms of the way the situation was dealt with and the outcomes, yeah? And that's what I'm trying to get across to you here. Eric, yours. I'm all good, man. I think you guys did it. I'm going to let uh, Ryan, I'm going to transition it to you and give you yep. two minutes to conclude. And then Tony will go back to you for two minutes of a conclusion. Yep. And then I'll wrap it up with some fundamental basic stuff just going forward. Ryan, it's all yours. Yeah, um, I, I, I think just, just in general, you know, looking at both play, there's some important things, you know, like a lot, a lot of important things happen there. We talk about the psychology, we talk about the social, we talk about all the five elements. But I want to narrow it a little bit more and really think about Casper, the goalkeeper. Casper, the, the human. How did Casper feel in that moment after he made those two unbelievable saves? I can tell you this much, man. You know, he has worked all his life to feel the way you felt in that moment. You're talking about confidence builder. That is the biggest confidence builder right there. You know, just to see all your teammates coming around and passing on the back like, hey, you just saved the day. But of course, you have to satisfy all five elements, weeks in, weeks out, months, days, years, just to produce one of that moment. So we're not gonna say one is more important than the other, but it does feel good as a, as a goalkeeper, as a person, when you're able to help out in crucial moments. And that's what we saw in those clips. It, it, a lot of it, again, wasn't orthodox, it was unorthodox, but it was effective and efficient. And I think we got to always have that mindset, any means necessary, we're willing to go above and beyond. 
and not give up and play and, and just to keep our, keep, our, keep our team in games. And when we can't, we're just human beings. We learn from it and we move on. So I think all of this is just a way of all of us growing. Again, this, this final in itself is all of us growing as coaches, as goalkeepers, as humans. Uh, and you know, I'm just glad that I have the ability to share knowledge and collaborate with every single one here. So, um, Eric, thank you very much for, for, for having me here. You know, Tony as well. Thank and you, all sir. the coaches. Tony, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, so a couple of things. Listen, coaches, I think most importantly, we look at the clips. And I think even the young goalkeepers with tonight have shown, showed fantastic confidence to share their observations and their thoughts and findings from these two clips. But I think what it does give us an understanding, guys, is that in any given moment, it's not just one element, one aspect that we need to focus on, we need to look at. So many different elements and aspects can affect the goalkeeper in any given moment. And to develop them to their fullest potential, we must think about the five elements of development and how we can holistically develop our goalkeepers. Goalkeepers, you're never always going to get it right. You're going to mess up. You're going to get it wrong. It will get messy. But don't worry about that. Yeah, Being a goalkeeper is probably the toughest role within the team. Bad things are going to happen. Mistakes are going to happen. But try, t try t taking them as learning opportunities. Put them behind you move on, but then continue to work hard to be the best you can be in every moment that you put the gloves on. And that's what I'd like to finish with tonight. Uh, you're talking about the beans, Cash? <laughs> ah, Eric, <give> me <laughs> time. Amir, go ahead, sir. Ask your question, please. Uh, so, like I said earlier, it was really – it's always – it's interesting to me. Um, like I said, what do you think about it? Should I do traditional or Danish cash? Good question. Who wants to go? Me? Ryan, it's up to you. <laughs> um, I'm very uh, – uh, uh, let's put it this way, Amir. What are you good at? Which one are you most effective at? Because if you're so, effective the traditional way, why switch to something that you're not effective at? You know, it's all well and good that there's a lot of trends going on, but not every trend is something that you should pick up. I think you should go and you should try. If it works, it works. If it doesn't work, you know what? Try something else or stick to what you, you're good at. You know, focus on your strength, in other words. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's my full sense. Mine, my, my, mine, would be, mine would be then, look, you know, as we talked about Casper, very similar to his, his father. You know, if you ever get the chance, you know, go on YouTube and look at some clips of Peter Schmeichel, Casper's dad. Probably one of the greatest goalkeepers ever lived. Fantastic for Manchester United and Denmark. Won many, many trophies and had a, a hugely successful career. But he made a living out of being different. Yeah, being unorthodox, but being effective. Now, the way he kept goal was probably very different to the way most goalkeepers would work in a technical sense. But you also have to look at his background. He came from a background of handball. It's a sport they play around the world, very, very much played in, in Denmark. So Peter actually played handball. So some of the traits, the techniques that you see that he used, and obviously Casper has taken on, like the second save you saw this evening, um, they come from working and playing different sports. So he's adapted those into his game. So like I've said to you, listen, it, it may fit him. He's trained and practised at it. He's tried it in training many, many times, and it now works for him at elite level during pressurised situations in games. What I wouldn't suggest is that you try it first and foremost in a game where there's something at stake. Have a go at practising it. If it works, fantastic. Like Ryan said, if it doesn't, then you leave it and you keep doing what you know is best for you. But I'm not saying for a second, don't try these things. But you must practise it first before you try and then transfer it to a game. Oh, can you explain it to me in a minute? In 30 Where's seconds? Amir? Maybe Amir can explain it. Yeah, let's go. Let's see what Amir comes up with. Can you give us a, a, an image, a, a showing of what you see? In what? What the, the technique. Danish catch. Yeah, the Danish catch. Um, shoot. My zoom. All right, so I'll just give you – it's pin your arms together like this, and then it's kind of weird because you have to time – you have to pretty much do this. Like at the exact time the ball comes to your chest. So that's the thing I'm not too comfortable with. Amir, show me that again. Show me that again, because I couldn't see. I can now. It's like this or like this. Yeah, so he kind of brings his hands here, doesn't it? Yeah. 
So just... what he does, he allows, you know, when we're coaching you as goalkeepers, what do we generally say when you're working with your handling is your first point of contact on the ball? What part of your body? Your hands. Your hands. Well, when you watch Casper do that, where, what part of his body generally has first contact with the ball? His body. His, his chest. Stomach. Yeah, and then the hands come around and secure the ball at the same time. So this now is... That, the... Say again? So this is dealing with a shot that he's fully behind and instead, okay, so it's, it's yeah. all right. Yeah, but he's also done it when he's diving, Greg. I've seen him do it, not just standing and catching. He's actually done it when he's diving and he's allowed the ball to come into his chest and then cut the hands over the top. Um, I'd love to have a football nearby me to show you properly, but I haven't got one. Um, yeah. It's very unorthodox, but for him and it's been effective, but he's very yeah. practised in it. So. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. So he lets it hit his chest, even if he's diving, he uses it, his chest as a third hand like you would on the ground, yeah. but he uses his chest yeah. as it. Yeah. Huh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Grab it on, it'd be on YouTube, so grab yourself a look if you can find it. I will, I will. Cool. Um, one thing with the catch I also found really good is that I know – Sometimes with powerful shots and I do this, I usually bend down to, you know, relieve the pressure. Mm -hmm. But with the Danish catch, I feel like it's safer. And most of the time, I really don't have to do that. I think it relieves all the pressure for me. If it works for you and me, then who are we to tell you not to do it, my friend? I love it. Well, Amir, I appreciate that question, and I'm going to open up to others. We have about three minutes until I want to get us out here at six, but we will go over if the questions continue. Let's start it. Who has a question for Tony or Ryan? And do not raise your hand. Just go right ahead and speak, please. <laughs> no question. Interesting. I got, I got a question, if that's all right. So, uh, Ryan, you, you've played in some big games. Um, one of the things I work on a lot with my goalkeepers is getting them to mark up. If you have somebody, a midfielder or a defender, um, that's maybe just doing an okay job marking up, what, what, is your, what are you saying um, to get that picked up a little bit? Um, first and foremost, the, the, again, we talk about the message, you know, being a communicator, one. Two, being a leader. You know, the, 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 the defenders, they got to trust the, the message and, and the messenger. You know, so if I don't build trust in the beginning, it's going to be very, very hard to go in the game and for them to listen to me. So that, that process is going on weeks and months before, you know, talking about practice sessions. So they actually understand, you know, me as a, as a goalkeeper, and I understand them and what, they, what stimulus they respond to. That is very important. Also, another thing that we've got to take in consideration, you know, and I got asked this question, I want to say two weeks ago, when you're in a stadium and there's 40,000 people, how do, you, how do you communicate? It's hard. That is very hard because they can't hear you. You can't hear them. No. And this is what we talk about, chemistry and understanding and the, the game before the game. We're building this weeks, months, years before. So, you know, we, we have that relationship, you know. So that's why relationship is crucial. For example, in this play with Casper, they know if they let the shot out, Casper is going to do everything in his power to keep the ball out of his net. And they trust that he will, you know. So they allow those shots to come from distance versus closer, you know. Awesome. Cool. Other questions? I have a question. I don't know if you can answer it, but a pin player to only being a goalkeeper, what age would you generally do that? And second question, if you have a goalkeeper that's incredibly talented, but um, the emotional well-being isn't there in terms of being the team leader and building up the players rather than bringing them down um, with no <coughs> attitude, do you, do you correct that or do you just move the player on to a different position? Can I answer the first part, Ryan? Is that okay? Uh, absolutely, you, you, absolutely. Eric, you and Ryan can jump in. So I can give you an idea of the way we look at it in the UK. You know, I've worked at, you know, academies, Liverpool, Man City, and, and many other different sort of clubs in terms of working through the phases. Foundation phase, which is the young end, youth phase, professional phase. Generally, what I'd, lo I'd like to see is that young players have an opportunity to try different positions. So we probably wouldn't pigeonhole a goalkeeper yet until they're 11, 12 years old over here. We'd give them, a, give them an opportunity to play different positions. Players can play where they want. And ultimately, by that age, we'd like to think that they've found their, their position. 
Now, that's not to say at seven, eight, nine years old, you might find a diamond that wants to be a goalkeeper, that fits the profile, that loves being in there and getting their hands dirty and diving at feet and making big saves. That's going to happen. I started at the age of seven as a goalkeeper and never looked back. But from my point of view, the more chance they get to play the different positions, they're also going to have a broader, more rounded understanding of the game as a whole in terms of how players play in different positions, what attackers might be thinking when they bear down on goal, you know, how people defend in certain situations. So it just builds their knowledge up of the game in general. Then they can specialise as they get a little bit older. That's generally the way we'd like to do it here in the UK. It may be different in the US, I don't know. But that's how we try to do it here. Part two, Ryan or Eric, you've got... Actually, I want to, Ryan, I want you to expand because I know your story and I hope you're going to say yes. it. But I'll let you talk. Yes. First. Yes. Um, so it's hard for me to tell you, okay, they should specialize at a younger age or, or older age. For me, I started being a goalkeeper at age 14. So it was a little bit later. So now to the second part of your question now about do they play at a role? Yes. For me, I, I, I was an outfield player, one. And then I also encouraged multi, multiple sports. I was a sprinter, I was a cricketer, I was a wicket, wicket keeper. I did a little bit of cheerleading. So in that same process, I'm training different muscles. You know, cheerleading, I, did, I was very flexible. You know, cricket, I talk about a small ball, work on my reflexes, on my eye coordination. You know, um, and then track and field, being, just being really explosive, coming off my line. And I think when I got introduced at 14 as a goalkeeper, the, 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 it, it was so much easier to accelerate certain teaching um, points. because Everything I already had. So I encourage um, multi sports. One, two, you know, don't pigeonhole yourself because one, you know, you don't know what you're really good at until you try it, you know. And the second part, as well, the third part of the question about being a leader, I think being a leader, um, it's a journey. You know, I think that's a journey, honestly. And I think if the minute you decide that you're going to be a goalkeeper, you, you're going to figure out if this is for you or not. You're going to figure out if you're a leader or not. And, and if you're not, you're going to learn real quick how to be a leader, you know, because you will, you will get punished. When you get punished, it's not a good feeling. And if you want to continue that journey, you will evolve, you know. So I think everything is a process and there is no yes or no answer. We just got to go through the process of finding out and see what works for you and what doesn't work. Awesome. Yes, did that answer your question? Thank you. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, guys, with that, if you could just give me two minutes to, to round, uh, round everything out and we'll get you out of here. First and foremost, can we all give a golfing clap to Mr. Ryan Thompson and Mr. Tony Elliott, please? I have one more question. Ah, Tyler, you go right ahead, sir. I'll let you go right ahead, please. Um, if there was one thing you're you could tell yourself when you were an 11-year-old, what would it be to improve on? Oof. Do you want to say that one, Tony? Yeah, I mean, listen, for me, it was to probably listen more because I was very single-minded and I kind of patterned myself to, to believe in me and trust myself. But I probably didn't listen enough and take enough information on board, which might have helped me a little bit later in life. And one thing I've learned now as a coach is to take that learning into the way I coach now. And that's to listen a lot more, not to continually give information, to drive. Listen to people, listen to their opinions, listen to their thoughts and feelings. And I I'll probably wish I'd have done a little bit more of that when I was a, a headstrong youngster. Yeah, because there was one direction I was going, that was the pro game. That's where I ended up, 14 years of pro. But, you know, at the end of the day, I think if I'd have probably just took that advice a little bit earlier, I might have learned quite a lot more. So listen to good coaches. That, that's key for you goalkeepers, because they've got a lot to share with you. Cool. Yeah, and, and, and Yes, and I think um, one for me is to stress less. At the end of the day, everything will be all right, man. At the end of the day, it's, all, it's always all right, as long as you give your best. Things always play the way it is. And if it doesn't, then wh wh why stress? You know, you control what you can control. You know, and things will fall in place, man. So, as a, as a, as a you know, 11 year old, 12 year old, even as an adult, why stress? You know, you know, great Bob Marley thing, every little thing is going to be all right. It's always all right, my friend. You know, so, you know, and I think as goalkeeper, man, you got to laugh at your, you got to laugh at your mistakes, bro. You got to laugh at it, move on quick, 
because everything will be all right. So stress less. Ryan, you said it, but we were all thinking it, man. I love how you kicked in with that verse. <laughs> um, guys, again, Ryan, Tony, is means so much to me that you're a part of this, in addition to the, the coaches that we had leading our goalkeeper uh, breakout rooms. Thank you very much. Uh, what we're going to be doing uh, going forward, if you did not receive an email with the notebook and the 2021 calendar, parents, let me know, all right? Send an email to the United Goalkeeping Alliance at yahoo.com and send any inquiries, any questions you have. Um, we are going to be doing this next week. And of the five elements of development, we're going to focus on two of them. We're going to focus on the tactical and the technical. And with those two subjects, we are going to be working with Coach Rick Staten. Coach Rick is at George Washington University with the women's uh, the women's team, the goal, I mean, he's a goalkeeper coach there. He's had stinks with the, um, in, in the professional women's game as well. And I know he's been a head coach at Seton Hall in addition to others. So we're very blessed to have Rick in addition to Mark Litton. Coach Mark is a professional indoor goalkeeper coach currently. And he was also a oh, United States oh. football national team oh, goalkeeper oh. coach um, in, in his heyday. So we have two amazing guests next week. And the following week, the two weeks from now, we'll discuss the other three elements of development, psychological, physical, and social. Then we'll have Dr. Bill Steffen from there, as well as Mr. Jesse Goldman, who's on the call tonight, in addition to Ryan Defabaugh, who is in, uh, owns the MBS Consulting, which is a, basically a consulting um, firm for student athletes. So we're going to get some interesting perspectives there. We are also going to be conducting one meeting with everybody in about two or three weeks for feedback and for an understanding as to what's happening in 2021 and how this is going to proceed. So more to come. You'll also get a survey from us on Monday. If you could quickly take that survey, it would be grateful for us because you are our client. And I can't stress that enough. We have 30 amazing coaches involved in this project and we all want our goalkeepers to improve. We are going to do whatever it takes to make sure you get to that next level of development in this setting. So we're really looking forward to this challenge. Everybody, thank you for participation again tonight. And if you have any individual questions, you can email that address that I mentioned earlier um, anytime, which is United Goalkeeping Alliance at yahoo.com.